Hello everyone, Pally Time here with a very special video for you today. This is the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Now, old school Pally Bros will know that every year on the charity stream, I used to show off the original Stanley Parable. It was originally released way back in 2013. That feels like almost a lifetime ago now. And by the way, the reason we haven't shown it recently on charity streams is because there's this achievement right here. Don't play Stanley Parable for five years. Easily the most difficult achievement I've ever had to unlock. <laughs> I've never played another game quite like this one. It's a super unique experience and I look back on it with the rosiest of rose-colored glasses. So when the Ultra Deluxe came out, I was very interested and I'm actually on vacation this week. So this felt like a perfect game to play before I left to get me in a good mood and give me the opportunity to share it with you guys again. I am kind of debating whether or not we should show all of the endings for this game or whether I should just make you guys play it yourselves. You can let me know it down in the comments, but we are going to begin a new game today. And I think this will be pretty straightforward. You'll have to come back next episode for more of the experience. But without any further ado, let's begin. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Well, that's good. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. <laughs> or did I? Or did I stand still for a minute? Yeah, okay, nothing happened. I guess I got up and got out of my office. So this game is all about player choice. So yes, um, I left my office. Like any other All normal day. All were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, maybe there's a memo in the meeting room that I need to pick up. Why can't I see any white stuff? Out of, why is there only white stuff out of these windows? I've heard of blackout curtains, but not whiteout ones. Ooh, there's a hallway back there on the other side. A 425, but uh, that's not for me today. And what does this say? Surname Axis. Uh, well, that's not my computer. I, I probably shouldn't touch it. Why is there so much of a mess outside of that door? The lazy bums. <laughs> Let's keep moving. The meeting room. Maybe there was a memo or something. Oh, that looks nice in there. Oh, that's a nice whiteboard. Wait a minute. There's two doors. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The door on my left. So just to give you a taste, what happens if I go through the door on the right? Notice the background music has totally faded. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Mm, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I was looking for the employee lounge. This ah, is nice. Yes, truly a room worth admiring. 
It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. <laughs> Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Oh, yeah, this is a good place. You can really tell that our company really appreciates us. That's why they built this lobby for the employees. Yes. All right. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Right, to the meeting so room. Detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yes, straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. You can already start to see the diverging paths that can happen here. What happens if I go back to this room? Can I open this? No, it looks like it's locked. All right, maybe there was a memo I missed. Let's get to the, the meeting room. Right, let's pay attention. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay. I mean, if anyone would know, it, it has to be the boss, right? You know, maybe it's just like Easter Sunday or something, and I, I didn't pick up on that. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay, make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header, and throw some bevel on all the text. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Who's changing the slide? Okay, well, let's, um, maybe the boss knows. The broom closet? Well, maybe I could take a broom with me. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Yeah, I turned around and... You're right, you're right. I don't know why I wandered in here. I should keep going. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Upstairs to my boss's office. That door's locked. Why is there so much red down here? Oh, this is the garage. But Stanley just couldn't do it. <gasps> he considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? That's a great question too! Matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? I think they are! That's the same car! This is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream! Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job <gasps> pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. And I still can't see my feet. So lucid. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? <laughs> now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, 
He knew for certain beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. How am I going to do that? So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. Okay. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. Oh, that's nice. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. What if everything's not fine? I am okay. Am I? I'm in the same spot. I'm in the exact same spot. Stanley began screaming. <laughs> Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please just the screen's turning tell me red. I'm real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Did I collapse? Did I literally just have a mental breakdown? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although <laughs> she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Didn't even stop to help us. Okay, I will admit that um, I got a little sidetracked, but look at this, we're right, oh, we're right back in our room. That must have all been a dream, it had to have been. Where was I going? All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I was going Stanley up to the boss's to room. To the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley door came on the to left. a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Naturally, why would I go through any other door? I wouldn't. That's the short answer. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. And not the broom closet this time. That's right. Straight to the office. Coming Here to we go. Case, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. On the way, boss. Sorry, I'm just a little confused today. I feel like I may have just had a mental breakdown. Wow, this is a nice office. This is really good compared to what we were in earlier. Oh, that's the executive bathroom. I, I don't think I can go in there. I don't think that's for me. Oh, good. That door closed behind us still. Okay, good. That's still happening. Even though there's no one here to make that door close. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. This must be where the boss hangs out. Good. Uh, boss? Anybody in here? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. No. So the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, How? eight, <laughs> four, five. But How course, would we know that? Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> 
this. <laughs> So, is there any clue in the room that it's 2845? Is there any way we could discern that? I, I don't, I don't think so. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know <laughs> that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct Ooh. code by sheer luck. Amazing. He oh, this door into opened the newly up. Opened passageway. Okay. Why would the boss have this right next to his room? This doesn't seem right. Is this like a fallout shelter? It looks like it's still kind of under construction. It's pretty dark in here, guys. Oh, this is an elevator. It does have a floor. Okay. Going down. Good. Descending deeper into the building. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. I do feel it a bit was peculiar. a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. What happens if I... <laughs> oh, well, maybe I'm not doing that anymore. It lit up, though. Maybe we could have gone back. God, I'm really cute. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. That's not good. I guess I'll go in. <laughs> Is this the light? Is this will turn on all the lights? Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd like that. Rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Is this like what Batman was doing in that one movie where he was spying on everybody in Gotham City and then there was that morality discussion on whether or not they should be doing it because this looks a lot like that. In fact, this looks like many more screens than what that was. Why did I come over here? Oh, we hit the lights button. Now there's a camera button. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. 427, that's us right there. That's our room right there. Yeah, I just left that place 100%. Well, I don't think anyone watched me come here, right? Oh my god, there were a couple people that were fired. They should have paid attention to the slide inside of the meeting room. What's this? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this no! time? No! Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Where does this take me? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control, never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Oh my and goodness. as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. That sounds like an excellent plan. So the only reason I got woken up at my desk was because the mind control facility went offline today. That is so strange to think about. Well, if no one's gonna ever use these controls again, this is a big red button. Can I press it? It actually does not look like I can. Uh, that's a five. Are there other numbers in here? Hold on, this is lit up. That's a three. 
one and two. So we just need to find four console disabled. There are, I know it's very hard to see in here, but there are like cables strewn out along the floor. I'm not seeing a number four button though. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's hit these in order. One, two, three. Oh, I can't get up to four. That way's actually blocked. Okay. I guess I'll just continue on into the facility power. Maybe that's how I destroy this thing. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. We can... And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. What if I turn it back on and then just like my job again? No. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Did Was I do the right over? thing? Did it work? Yes. He had won. Yeah! He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom! Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. What if I didn't step through the open door? I mean, of course I am. Yes, I'm no longer mind controlled. This is the best thing that could ever happen to me. Why am I on a pristine looking countryside, Stanley though? Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. But then Stanley wakes up right back in his cubicle to try again. This is basically a choose your own adventure game with a lot of different outcomes. I hope you guys enjoyed the preview of today. I didn't mean to get an alternate ending first, but you know, that's just sometimes your feet go where they go. We'll take a look at another outcome very soon. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Take care. Goodbye.